Low Ink is waiting for you in the room below us. Master? Contact the main Astropathicus Enclave here on Hubris, and request a full transcript of off-world traffic for the past six weeks. Also, any record of unlicensed traffic, individuals using their own Astropaths. Whatever they can make available. And a little threat that it's an Inquisitor requiring this data wouldn't hurt. Will you be requiring an auto-seance? Not yet, but I will eventually. I will give you time to prepare. Master, is it true that the female Vibbon is dead? Yes, Loink. Ah, I thought it was quiet. The comment wasn't as callous as it sounded. Loris Vibbon was a latent psyker. Whilst she was alive, I could hear the unconscious broadcasting of her young, eager mind. And yet my psychic abilities at the time were undeveloped compared to Loink's. Loink, although a young man, was already physically deteriorating from the demands of a psyker's life. He hadn't been with me long. My previous astropath had been killed trying to translate a warp cipher six weeks before. Looking for Amos. Last time I saw him, he was in his room. I spent an hour with Amos in his cramped, data-slate-filled room, preparing a report for Carpal. I set out the basic details, reserving anything I felt he didn't need to know. I accounted for my actions. I made Amos check them against local law. In truth, I was bulletproof against local legislation, but I wanted to check anyway. An Amalathian prides himself on working with the structures of Imperial society, not above or beyond them, or through them, as a mono-dominant might. I wanted Carpel and the senior officials of Hubris on my side, helping my investigation. Although exhausted, I could not sleep before paying one last visit to Vibbon. Loris Vibbon. Twice she saved my life. She saw herself as my aid and bodyguard, but in truth, she was more a companion and fellow warrior. Get ready. Lift off for Sun Dome in five. For the first time in six years, I did not dream about Iclon. I dreamt of something else.
blank eyes were empty. Not like I clones draws, but vacant, like an immense, starless distance. I had no idea who he was. At that point, Eisenhorn. Touchdown, destination reached. Ready to disembark. Damn bright place. They have 11 months of pitch dark, so they light their habitat to an excessive degree. They don't get many visitors in this season. Most of the ships here are local, transatmospheric. I make three non locals aside from us two trader launches and a private cutter. I'd like to know how that bastard Iclone got here and how he was intending to leave again. I'll find out. What about Vibben? Do you know what her wishes were? Did she want her remains sent back to Tornish for burial? I don't know, Weisenhorn. She never told me either. Take a look through her effects. See if she left any testament or instruction. Can you do that? I'd like to do that. Amos had completed his report. Now it was time to face the locals. It was a short trip through the overbright streets to the custodial hall. The flowers? From the hydroponic farms on East Dome 7. Signifying? Morning, same as the sashes. <laughs> what? happened last night is a major tragedy for this world. Yellow is their holy color. I believe the local religion is a solar belief. The sun as an emperor? On the extreme here, for obvious reasons.
High Custodian. They are all dead. All 12,142. Processional 212 is dead. None survived the trauma. Hubris has my sincere sympathies, High Custodian. Your sympathies? A great part of our ruling elite die in one night, and we have your sympathies to console us. That is all I can offer, High Custodian. Your arrogance astounds me, Offworlder. You bring this monster to our world, battle with him through our most sacred sanctums. Wait. I came here to save you and deny Iclone's plans. But for the efforts of myself and my companions, he might have destroyed more than one of your hibernation tombs. I broke none of your laws. I was careful to preserve your codes in pursuit of my work. What do you mean I brought this monster here? We registered no off-world ship these past 20 days, except yours, Eisenhorn. Did you choose Hubris because it was a quiet place, where you might finish your feud undisturbed in the long dark? Amos? The supports are early Imperial Gothic in style, but... Amos, the report. Read this, Carpo. Read it thoroughly. Or should I read it aloud to all here assembled? Should I explain how I came here at the last minute when I learned Iclone was moving to Hubris? That I learned that only by astropathic decryption of a cipher message sent by Iclone two months ago? A cipher that killed my astropath in his efforts to translate it? Inquisitor, I... And what about this? The evidence that Iclone has been planning a move against your world for almost a year. And this gathered last night that an unregistered starship moved in and out of your orbit to deliver Iclone three days ago, unnoticed by your planetary overwatch and the custodian guardians? You were wide open. He exploited you. Don't blame me for anything except being too late to stop him. As I said, you have my sincere condolences. And next time you choose to confront an Imperial Inquisitor, you may want to be more respectful. I'm excusing a lot, because I recognize the trauma and loss you have suffered. But my patience isn't limitless, unlike my authority. I expect your full cooperation as I extend my investigation. But the matter is over. I want your consent for me to continue, as well as your full cooperation. Iclone may be dead, but he was just the blade point of a long and still dangerous weapon. What are you talking about? If he speaks again without me knowing who he is, I will throw him out of the window. And I won't open it first. This is Chasner Fischig of the Adeptus Arbites. I wanted him present. Chasner? Inquisitor, my question stands. Murdin Iclone was a facilitator. A brilliant, devious man, one of the most dangerous I've ever hunted. He had no true allegiances. He worked to facilitate the grand schemes of others. What he was doing here on Hubris was to advance and develop someone else's plans. I must work back from Iclone, his men from any clue he left and dig my way into whatever greater secret darkness was employing him. And for this you want the cooperation of the people of Hubris? The people, the authorities, you, everyone. This is the Emperor's work. Will you shrink from it? No, sir, I will not. Excellent. I grant my authority. Conduct your work thoroughly and quickly. I ask two things in return. And they are? You report all findings to me, and you allow the Chastener to accompany you. Fishig has the authority of the Arbites. Consider him a local guide. And your ears and eyes. I will be grateful for his assistance. Where first? They wanted blood, I realized. 
They wanted someone to punish for the deaths, or something to tell to the rest of the population when they woke to this disaster a few months later. I couldn't blame them. Midas, prepare the combat simulator. We have a new crew member. The combat simulator is ready. Okay, Chase Nafishik. Let's see what you've got. Had enough then? Round two, begin. Would not be my weapon of choice, Inquisitor. Perhaps I could change. Try changing your weapons before the next round. Use the terminal over there. Here we go. <laughs> Have a chamber made more fight. Not bad, Chasener. That's the mess you've made of my hold. Master, I have scrutinized all of iClone's transmissions. They are all in cipher and it will take some time yet for me to unlock them. But Brother Amos is... The key is in the lag. During your struggle with the recidivist, he was sending and receiving to someone with a 12 and a half minute delay. That's another system. You're sure? There are three worlds between 11 and 15 minutes lag from Hubris. Thracian, Primaris, Cobalt II, and Gudrun. Cobalt is no more than an Imperial watch station. Nothing there. Thracian is no surprise. That's where we followed him from. But Gudrun? Gudrun's a primary trade world. Old culture, old families. Old poisons. Can we be more certain? I'm sure I can break the Cypher Master. At least for the coded headers, if not the actual text. Given enough time... Lowink, tell Gregor about the Hubris transmissions. There were messages sent from Hubris to Iclone's ship before he arrived. Not so heavily encrypted. They are rather vague and indirect. But they do discuss something called the Pontius. The Pontius? Hmm. Do you have a location? Why else do you employ us? Thorview, 12011. 
on the west side of the dome, the high rent quarter, Aristo Turf. You said we were meeting at two. I did, didn't I? Just about to come and find you as it happens. We're going to Thorview. The wealthiest Hubrites kept winter palaces on the west perimeter of the Sun Dome. According to Chase Nafishik, they enjoyed both light and dark, as if that was something indulgent. They looked inwards to the lit dome and had shutters that could be opened to view the dark landscape of the winter desert. It was a spiritual thing, Amos suggested. Wait! The area is lousy with laser traps. Most perturbatory. They are triggered by proximity. But we will need to pick our way through carefully. Gregor, you should be able to hack this door's security with the Auspex. We need to find a more discreet way in. Perhaps we can find an entrance higher up. 